Welcome back. So next we're gonna talk about a really important feature of Webpack, which is called cache busting. It's how we can prevent certain assets like our main bundle JS or our CSS bundle once we, once we actually make a separate CSS bundle, whatever those files are, how we can prevent browsers from caching them when we don't want them to be cached. So I'm gonna begin with a really quick overview of caching. So I'm on just the Webpack uh, repo on GitHub. If I go to my network tab, and I do a hard refresh, hard refresh, command shift R on a Mac. You'll see, I'm just looking at CSS only. There are two CSS files and notice their names. They are quite long and ridiculous. In addition to that, we have over here, let's see under size, you can see the size of the file. Now I'm going to do another refresh, but a regular refresh, not a hard one. So these assets, some of them might be cached. So I'm gonna refresh without shift, so no shift key. Notice that this time it says from disk cache. So what this means is that it's using the copy that it already had. My browser remembered this file. It remembered this file name and it decided, okay, we already have that. We're not gonna go get the new copy because nothing has changed or we assume nothing has changed. It's the same name. Now that's a pretty simplified explanation, but this can cause problems. If right now we're using what main.js, if every time we write code and we bundle it, it's always called main.js, then it could be cached in someone's browser. And we could completely overhaul the application code and we build it again, we push it up to our server, it's running, and that person uh, requests our website, their browser might say, oh, I already have main.js and just use that version. So what we can do instead is add in this crazy jumble of numbers and letters, which is called a content hash, into the file name. And what's special about that content hash is that it is actually determined, it's based off of the content in the file itself. So if nothing changes in that file, we will end up, let's just do a simplified version, ABC. So right now, my code in main.js, all of this code, we run it through this uh, special hashing function, which is, I believe it uses one called MD5, uh, a relatively or very famous hashing function, and we get ABC. So next time we build, nothing has changed, we still get ABC. But then I change one character, or I delete everything and rewrite all my code, I get a completely different hash. So that time it might be this instead. Now they're much longer, they're much more complicated, but that's the idea. So every time we change our code, we get a new file name, but if we don't change the code, the file name stays the same, so that caching still works, but we're busting cache busting, uh, when we change something in the code, we get a new file name. So right now it's main.js every time, that's a problem. All we have to do is add in content hash like this inside of brackets. And usually you wanna do main.content hash or vendor. You don't wanna just do content hash.js. And you'll see that's what they do on GitHub. If we go back to network, refresh one more time, GitHub dash blah, 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 dot CSS frameworks dash. So they use a dash, but it's the same idea. So we're gonna implement that now with content hash. And if I build right now, it's going to take the contents of this file after it builds it and before it creates the new file, but take all of this code, it hashes it using, like I said, I think it's MD5 and it gets this special hash that only corresponds to the content in here. And then it sticks that in the file name. So let's see if it works. NPM start. Do we end up with content hash? What file does it make for us? Take a look. Main.1eda8f blah, 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 blah. And if I run it again without changing anything, it should be the same still. And it is 1eda. So remember that 1eda. Now I'm going to change something in my code. I'm going to add a console.log to my index.js. Console.log. Hi. So now the code, when we build main.js will be different. And that means that the content hash will be different, which means the name is different. So now we have FA20B15, blah, blah, blah. So we are getting these new file names anytime we change the code, but if we're not changing it, it stays the same. So this is really useful because if you have, like we will later on, we'll have a vendor.js, which will contain libraries, things that aren't going to change as much. 
those won't need to change. They stay the same, so we can just cache them, or the browser can cache them. But our application code might change more often, so then we get a new file name each time, which then, when it's requested from the browser, it won't be cached, or it won't use a cached version because it's a new file name it hasn't seen before. So that's all great, but we have a problem. How are we going to link? How do we include that script? Our index.html right now is including main.js. How are we going to dynamically predict, or what are we going to do? We can't just assume that it's going to be this every time because it changes. So the answer is we don't write the script ourselves. We don't include this script anymore. We're going to have Webpack build our HTML file for us and stick it in this folder. So it's going to automatically come up with the correct script name and put it at the bottom. But to do that, we have to learn about plugins. So let's do it. All right, so plugins, according to the docs, give us the option to customize the Webpack build process in a variety of ways. <laughs> Very useful definition here. So Webpack uh, comes with a bunch of these different plugins that they talk about on their webpage, but there's also a whole bunch of third-party plugins that you can find uh, here. Awesome Webpack contains, I don't know, a couple hundred of them. So they do all sorts of things. We'll see a few more throughout the course. We'll find one, we'll use one that is gonna help us uh, minify our CSS and export CSS files. We'll see one right now, which is the HTML, where are you? HTML Webpack plugin, which will help create our HTML file for us. And we'll also see one that helps us clean up our dist folder because, spoiler, you might, you might notice right now, it's getting clogged. Every time we run start, npm start, we're getting, sometimes we're getting new files. If we change our code, we get a whole new file. And if we use this clean Webpack plugin, it will help clean it up. So plugins give us additional functionality. So let's talk about the HTML Webpack plugin. It simplifies creation of HTML files. This is especially useful for bundles that include a hash in the file name, which changes every compilation. That sounds like exactly what we need. You can either let the plugin generate a file for you or supply your own template. So we'll do both. We're gonna begin by just having it make a file for us. The first thing we have to do is install it. npm install dash dash save dev HTML webpack plugin. So I'm just gonna copy that one, move it over here and paste it. While that's going, let's look at how we use it. So we require it in our config file and then there's something new we haven't seen yet. Plugins, this is something, it's a property we add to the object that we're exporting just like entry or output. In plugins, we pass in an array that contains as many plugins as we want. So let's try it out. So let's make sure we are requiring it in our Webpack config at the top. And then we can add in plugins, which is an array. Don't forget your comma, I always do that. And then I get an error when I try and build. And then we'll just pass in new HTML Webpack plugin. So we're making a new instance of it and we're going to save. So we haven't configured anything. Let's see what happens. I haven't told it what name I want the file to be. I haven't told it what should go in that file. All I've said is use this HTML Webpack plugin, which is going to make me some file. Let's see. Let's run npm start. Hopefully no errors, okay. Let's go back and look at our dist folder. Something changed. Index HTML, it's very simple, very sparse. It has a default title. I didn't tell it to call it Webpack app. I didn't say it should be index either. We can change that if you wanted to, but I like index, it's logical. And most importantly, our script is included automatically at the bottom. So whatever this content hash is, every time, if I change it, if I change those files, we'll end up with a new script. Now we have another problem, which is our content is not in here. So even though my JavaScript is included, if I open this file right now, which for the record is not the same file I've been opening. I've been using this index where I hard coded in main.js, but that's changed now. That doesn't exist or main.js is not being exported anymore. So instead I need to use this index HTML. I need to open this file from my dist directory. So I'll just do it from the terminal. I'll do open dist slash index and we have a problem. There's no content on the page. Our script is here as we saw, or as I talked about. So that part is working, but what about our HTML content? This is where we need to tell it a template to use. So this line somewhere, where is that? 
you can either let the plugin generate an HTML file for you, supply your own template, or use your own loader. So we're going to do the most basic template possible. Uh, we're not going to use uh, a library. We're not going to do like handlebars or any other templating language. We're just going to do a plain HTML file. So I'm going to come over wrong way. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, I'm going to make a new file inside of my source directory and I'll call this template.html. And I'm going to go to my original index, copy the whole thing over into template.html, but I'm going to delete things. For example, we don't need this bootstrap anymore. Webpack is going to take care of that. I don't need this script tag. Webpack takes care of that. Um, I'm going to leave this SVG file. We're going to come back to it in a, sec or a separate video to address how we how does Webpack work with images. But for now, this is our template. So we're going to tell this HTML plugin, use this code from this file, put the script tag at the bottom, and make sure it's the correct script tag. Whatever the content hash is, it needs to match. So now all we have to do is in our Webpack config, here where we're using this plugin, we need to tell it to use that template. And we just pass in an object and a property, so template. And our template file is called template.js, no, .html, whoops. And that is coming from, let's make sure we have this correct. So this is from the Webpack config file. We're inside of source. So we need to do dot slash source slash template.html. Okay, so it's going to use this template, template.html, take this code, put it into a new file, which it's calling index.html by default. And it's going to make sure to include our script tag at the bottom using the correct name, the correct file name, depending on which bundle we just built. Let's see if it works. NPM start, fingers crossed. Let's look at index. Okay, so here's all of our code, all of the HTML we needed. And down at the very bottom, we have a script tag and it's using our bundle. So every time we build now, if we change our code, we rebuild, we get a new bundle, we get a new index file with a new script tag. Let's try running it. Make sure we're using the dist slash index.html. The image is not working, we'll come back to that. But our JavaScript is now loading, our HTML is here, it looks good. Okay, so we saw a lot in this section. We talked about plugins in general. This is not the last plugin we'll see, but we actually started by talking about content hashing and cache busting. How do we set up Webpack so that it uses that content hash, it's really simple as we saw, in the file name when it bundles. And then that enables us to bust caches. If we change something, we get a new file name. If we don't change it, it's the same file name every time. So the caching, the cached version is just fine if we don't change it. In addition, this caused a problem because we need to dynamically link to this file name. It's changing. So that's what this plugin does. We give it a template and it uses that. It builds a file for us. And this is the file we are now using. So every time that we run npm start, it makes this new file and we open this file instead of this one. We can actually delete this one entirely. I'm gonna do that right now. Okay, so I'm gonna commit. So if you wanna follow along, committing now, and I'll see you back in the next video. If you enjoyed this video, my cat and I really appreciate it. If you share it with anyone you think would get something out of it, uh, leave a comment, subscribe please, turn on notifications. Oh, so annoying asking you to do that. Anyway, uh, have a good day and I'll see you in the next video. All right, thanks.